this Easter tide. So I brought a little joy and color uh, to the service this morning. So it's good to see you all here and for those of you on Zoom. Our service continues on page two of your service leaflets. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And join me as we pray the collect of purity together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together let us pray the ancient Pascha Nostrum by half verse. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. 
Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'd like to share a prayer for Earth Day. Let us pray. God of unchangeable power, when you fashioned the world, the morning stars sang together, and the host of heaven shouted for joy. Open our eyes to the wonders of creation and teach us to use all things for good. To the honor of your glorious name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first lesson, a reading from Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all, those, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the psalm in unison. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low and he saved me. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, no man is dependable. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. You have loosened my bonds. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Our second lesson a reading from the letter of Peter, from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you, are, you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them what things. They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But he had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As he came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. 
Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told him what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Let us pray. The Lord, open our eyes. Help us as a community that we can open up the scriptures and learn all about you and how you have called us to be your people in the world, your kingdom. And so we ask your blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, last Sunday, Mike used an illustration from the musical Hamilton. I was expecting, I want to be in the room where it happens, since Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, and especially for Thomas, who had missed the first time Jesus showed up. And instead, Mike recalled King George III singing to his rebellious subjects, yeah, you may have won, but you'll be back. They may have won the war. But as King George reminded them, they had no leadership, no constitution, and no government structure. And Mike shared that Jesus showed up like he said he would. He comforted his followers, giving them hope. He corrected their faulty views of what they thought the kingdom of God was all about, and then gave them the Holy Spirit and a vision for community and mission. Well, this morning, I'm going to use an American film classic. Guess who's coming to dinner? How many of you have ever had one of those dinner parties and things just went south? Have you ever had one of those? Oh, good, yeah, you just kind of never know. Things happen. This morning, uh, Shirley shared about a dinner that she had that things went south. And, and so, yeah, we, we've had those where a guest can change the whole tenor of an evening of dinner. Well, guess who's coming to dinner tackled the then current and difficult topic of mixed marriage. Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn were a newspaper editor and a art dealer. Their daughter, Joey, had been in Hawaii and flies back and says that she's bringing a guest. Little do they know it's her fiance till they show up. And her fiance is a prominent medical doctor played by Sidney Portier. Tension builds at the beginning all the way up to the time that the dinner with the doctor's parents flying up from Los Angeles appear. And soon their own prejudices and the, the societal norms of society that day start bubbling up. Now Dr. Prentice's parents show up, he's a mail carrier and his mother's a homemaker. At first, both fathers are totally against the marriage, and they use every argument about mixed marriage and why they shouldn't marry. How will you be accepted as a couple in society? What kind of friends will you have? Where will you live that you'll be accepted? What if you have children? You will be illegal in 17 states. The focus isn't on the two young persons in love, but what society thinks. By the end of the movie, change occurs. The parents start to deal with what's going on with their own feelings. And they're changed by 
the love between the two young people and their upcoming engagement. They're still dealing with their old prejudices and what society says is right and proper, but love wins out and the, and the families come together against the prejudices of the world. This movie challenges us on many levels, but interesting how one dinner guest can challenge and change the views of those at that dinner. And it is the start of a new beginning. Our gospel today is about a dinner guest who challenges and changes his host views of themselves in the kingdom of God. Not recognizing Jesus, the two disciples are walking from Jerusalem to their home in Emmaus. They are dazed in their emotions about what had just happened to their rabbi, killed by empire and religious authorities, and now confused because they have heard reports by the other disciples that Jesus was alive, risen from the dead. So this stranger walking with them asks what they're talking about. Cleopas shares all about Jesus and what had taken place. And this is an interesting note, so I didn't realize it because I liked the artwork I picked out on the cover. But then as I was doing some study, Bible scholars N.T. Wright and James Montgomery Boyce acknowledged that the other disciple was no more likely than Cleopas' wife, Mary, who was one of the three women at the crucifixion. And so one of the women behind Jesus, you can tell it's a woman. And I thought, oh, how, how a new discovery for me. And as it was getting late, they invite Jesus home for dinner, still not recognizing Jesus. But there he is, he explains to them from Moses to the prophets, what the scriptures declared about the anointed one, the one who came from God. It was all about himself. So they prepare to eat. Jesus breaks the bread. They recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Then he vanishes. Guess who was at dinner with us? It was Jesus. And he changes their perspective on their present reality so that they can see the kingdom of God is here and now. They return to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples their good news. I've shared this with you before in the past, but when Father John Cox and I shared with our friends at the synagogue, when they were, they've been, they were doing some research and asking questions of other faith traditions, and they said, well, explain Christianity to us. Well, it's a hard order in 45 minutes of Zoom, as you could imagine. But we both agree that our two distinctives are these, as followers of Jesus. First is incarnation. God took on our flesh in Jesus, and that Jesus is the hope for anointed one, or the Messiah. Those are our distinctives. And this is what Jesus explained to those two disciples at that very intimate moment. In following Jesus, our reality is changed from hope in earthly powers, wealth, and leaders. Our reality in following Jesus, following the way of love and God's kingdom, come to earth. We say it every Sunday when we say the Lord's Prayer. God's kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven. Oh, come on, you, you know this. We say it every Sunday. God's kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom that Jesus ushered in and firmly established after the resurrection is all about God's love, mercy, redemption, unconditional love, justice, and compassion to be lived out in all that we say and do as followers of Jesus. I threw myself a birthday party on Friday. I invited some guests, Peter and Krista, 
and then our four new Danish friends, and David and I. And we sat and we feasted on great food, wonderful conversation around the table when we could hear each other. Unfortunately, it's a very loud restaurant, but they have good food. Peter and I were, were, were sharing meal and talking. And Peter looked at me and said, if it wasn't for that trip to the Episcopal Church in New York, when I visited my uncle and my aunt, I wouldn't be at St. James today because I don't know where I would be. And I said, wow, I said, it was Jesus. It was Jesus that brought us all here. And when we gather in Jesus' name, every time we gather, we gather at his table. We welcome everybody. And it's because of Jesus. I probably would never have met Peter if it hadn't been for Jesus and St. James. I probably wouldn't have met most of you. But it's because of Jesus and St. James that we are here. We're not just a bunch of nice people who gather together and do nice things. Just as Jesus, the dinner guest, challenged and changed Cleopas and Mary's views of themselves and others. It's always the start of a new beginning. This resurrected Jesus, this cosmic Christ, changed everything for them and for us. When we come to Jesus' table every time, we receive grace and forgiveness and strength to be God's witnesses in the world. We've taken a gamble, and I hope that you will keep Mike and the Learning Center in your prayers. Pray for the Learning Center, pray for the mentors, and pray for students that will come and learn to improve their reading skills. It's because of Jesus and St. James that we're going to make a difference in the lives of others. So this week, as you journey, look for Jesus on the road. Or better yet, pray that God will open your eyes when you encounter Jesus. Let him open your heart and mind to the scriptures on how to live, how to serve, how to love others each day. And I hope this coming year we'll spend more time in the scriptures together. May our eyes be opened. And may our hearts burn to share God's transforming love with everyone we need and in everything we do. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us confirm our common faith as we say, We believe in God, the Creator, who created and is creating everything, the universe, the world, the plants and the animals, and us, each of us, unique, individual, and beloved by God. We believe in God, the Christ, who saved and is saving everything, the universe, the world, the plants and the animals, and us, each of us unique, individual, and beloved of the Christ. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who guided and is guiding everything, the universe, the world, the plants and the animals, and us, each of us unique, individual, and beloved of the Spirit. We believe that this one God in three persons is present among us, working directly in our 
our lives and the lives of all who are born into this world, striving to bring us back into harmony with all creation and with God, forgiving, healing, touching everyone, never rejecting any who are willing to seek to freely offer gift of love and grace and eternal life. Amen. On this third Sunday in Easter, walk with us on our own Emmaus roads. As we place our hope in you, we are sometimes slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared and all your teachings. Stay with us when evening is at hand. Make our hearts burn within us as the scriptures are opened and we find wisdom and guidance for our lives. Help us to recognize you in the breaking of the bread. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Deepen our commitment to the proclamation of the good news forming conscience, intellect, and will in pursuit of truth and rightful living. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. We pray for the church and for all the people of God who labor for good. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Paula, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay leaders that we continue to be witnesses to Christ's resurrection, grace, and love in all we do and say. We lift before you those in need of our prayers, remembering Nick, Bobby, Jim, Barbara, Cynthia, the Barnett family, and Andrew. Be their comfort and healer. We also share our thanksgivings and concerns on our hearts, either silently or aloud. We give you thanks uh, for preparation for the upcoming baptisms and marriages this year. We pray for Father Jim, who is uh, in need of our prayers at this time. Thank you for hearing our prayers. We are your servants, and you have freed us from our bonds. We give thanks for our congregation, from the youngest to the most senior, for all occasions of joy and every cause of gladness from your hand. In the courts of the Lord's house, hallelujah. We intercede for those suffering oppression, and for all hampered by dividing bitterness. Wherever hate has grown hard and people cannot make peace, grant your saving spirit. The Lord watches over the innocent. We pray for all who have died and those who may die this day. Hold them in eternal life and seal our hearts in the knowledge of Christ's resurrection. Precious in God's sight, is the death of the faithful. Make our love genuine, that we may care for one another from the heart, and those who have been born anew from imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. We, we will walk, walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. And Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us witnesses to the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 You may be seated. 
Well, as I sent out the, the email on Friday, um, many of you remember uh, Lyle and, and Judy Curry, and uh, so uh, we have some cards in the back um, to sign, uh, to send to family members if you'd like to sign those. Uh, and the intentions of our Eucharist this morning will to give thanks and celebrate uh, the life of Judy Burry, uh, who was a longtime member here. Um, and uh, I also uh, pulled out the 150th anniversary book that has their photo, um, just as a reminder. Um, so uh, again, uh, keep uh, the Burry family in your prayers. Well, as we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, bountiful are God's gifts to us. In gratitude, let us offer our gift, our hearts and the fruit of our labor to God's service. Amen. Amen.
at the table with his crestfallen disciples. He was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Come among us now in the power of your Holy Spirit, that your people may discover you in the breaking of the bread, that you may stay with us and make your home among us, that these gifts of bread and wine may become for us. Body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who would suffer with his disciples, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Sharing God. The power of your Holy Spirit, repeat among us your Son's actions of taking, blessing, breaking, and sharing, that you may take, bless, break, and share us, and that the world may recognize you in the way you act in our lives. Breathe your Spirit on your church that we may feel our hearts on fire as you talk with us and explain the scriptures to us. Inspire all who stand still, looking sad. Open the eyes of all who are kept from perceiving you. Bring your bread of life to feed all who hunger in body, mind, or spirit. And so the day when we live your life abundant with the communion of saints in the presence and companionship of your Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then the grace of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the love of God who raised him from the dead, and the power of the Holy Spirit who fills the world with new life, bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 